Hi, and welcome to the lesson on zero and negative exponents. You'll have to pardon my voice. I'm sick. I have strep throat. So it's no fun, but the learning must go on, right guys? So here we go. All right, so let's start with this chart and kind of go through it and talk about what each thing is. Two to the fourth in expanded form means that I write it out four times. And when I do that math, I would get 16. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now 2 squared, right here, expanded form. Just write 2 twice. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 to the first power is just 2 written one time, and it's 2. Now how we're going to finish this chart is we're going to do... 2 to the 0, and we're just going to decrease. 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2. Well, something that we're going to learn today is any number, any variable, anything to the 0 power is 1. So, it's going to be a 1, it's going to be a 1. Anything to the 0 power automatically becomes a 1. 2 to the negative 1. Now, a negative exponent means that we are going to go to numbers that are smaller than 1. We are now talking about fractions. So it's going to be that this negative 1 changes our 2 into a fraction. So this, this is how we normally would see it if we wrote it in fraction form. But this negative exponent right here, that negative exponent is going to cause the entire 2 to the negative 1 to come down to the denominator. So our new fraction is actually going to flip. And we will get a 2 to the first power, but it'll be on the denominator now. So what just happened is this negative 1 right here makes our number into something less than 1. It flips our number so that the 2 to the negative 1 moves down to the denominator so that we can make a fraction. So it is going to be 1 half. Now, 2 to the negative second, the same thing is going to happen. If I were to write it as a fraction, it would look like that. But I'm going to move, because of this negative exponent, and now I'm going to get 1 over 2 squared. Notice how, in both cases, there's no longer a negative 1, and there's no longer a negative 2. So when they go down into the denominator, the negative sign is no longer with us. So now that leaves us with 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. The most important thing that you need to learn about this lesson today, negative exponents flip down to the denominator, and anything to the 0 power is always a 1. Even something like, um, here I'll, over on the right side, 75 to the 0 power, 1. 348 to the 0 power, it's a 1. All right, so let's move on. So we just talked about this, a 0 exponent. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. 3 to the 0 power, 1. 4 to the 0 power, 1. 3,641 to the 0 power, 1. Any number to the 0 power, g to the 0 power, 1. Okay? Now let's focus on negative exponents. Negative exponents mean that our 
number will become less than 1, it means that our number will become a fraction. The negative exponent has the power to flip. So if this were x to the negative first power over 1, this negative 1 as my exponent will move the entire thing down to the denominator. Like this. But what's on top? Well, we could just have a 1 there. It's not 0. Because if you think about it, there was like a 1 in front of here. We just don't talk about it. It's an imaginary 1. Okay, so it flips down to the bottom. x to the negative 2 becomes, can you guess? What do you think? What do you think it becomes? I can't hear you. I want you to volunteer. Even though I'm not there, I want you to volunteer. What does it become? Okay, I'm hoping you said this. Remember now it's a positive 2. Ooh, look at this next one. All right. So, vx to the negative second is on the denominator. Well, if this moved down to the denominator, this problem, if it starts at the denominator, where's the only place it can go? If it starts at the denominator, where's the only place that it could move? Where? Where could it move? Up. So, the 3 will stay. And the x squared moves up with it. We could put over 1, but really and truly, waste of our time to put all these 1s. Let me erase very carefully. There we go. All right. So when in doubt, you need to write it out. So if you need to expand your exponents, do it. If you're not sure what to do with a zero power, put a one there instead. When we say identify the base first, what that means is you need to know what base you're working with. Like here, x is the base. So x to the negative one is going to become with you know, it moves down to the denominator, x to the 1. But you don't need to write a 1. So, we just can write 1 over x. If the negative exponent is already at the denominator, it's just going to move up to the numerator. So here's what it looks like. This x to the negative 1 moves upward. But again, we don't need to write all these ones, so just x is right. So what I had here originally, that's the answer. x, plain old x. Okay, so I included all of these notes on the side of your paper because I want you to constantly be referring to them and to be looking at them and refreshing your brain and saying, yes, yes, I'm supposed to do this. x to the 0 is 1. When it's a negative exponent, I bring it down to the bottom. Or, in this case, right here, I would move it up to the top. So let's start on our examples. All right. Well, choice A, or problem A, is pretty basic. I got a 3 to the squared, and oh, what's anything to the 0 power? That's right, it's a 1. So basically, my answer is 9 times 1. Well, 9, right? All right, next. 2 times x to the 0. x to the 0, anything to the 0 power, is 1. 2 times 1, 2. Perfect.
Let's go to C. This whole thing is raised to the zero power. 2 goes to the zero power, x goes to the zero power. But if the whole thing is raised to the zero power, that means the whole thing is going to end up being 1. Here's the slow way to do it. 2 to the 0, x to the 0. Well, 2 to the 0 is 1, x to the 0 is 1, so 1 is my answer. Well, that's what I got. Okay, let's go on to D. Okay. Here we are. Let's rewrite it, making everything we can, like anything to the zero power, a 1. So, 2x squared. Just leave it. Oh, y to the zero. 1, 3. Now, only the x is to the zero power. The 3 is not to the zero power. And then y will also just stay. Parentheses means multiply, remember? So, let's do what we can. I got a 2 times a 1 times a 3 times a 1. 6. Then I got an x. Oh, but it's the only x there is. So, just leave it alone x. Then I got a y that's all alone. So just leave it y. And that is your final answer. Write out e. Here we go. The 3 and x to the negative 2. x to the negative 2 is going to be moved down. So let me just write what I have. Nothing right now is going to happen with the 3 over 9. And I wrote way too big. But the x to the negative 2, this is going to move to the... So the x squared is going to move to the denominator. This y is going to stay on top. Okay, so we've completed everything on the numerator. Now let's focus on the denominator. The 9 is there, we got it. The x, nothing happens to it, just keep it in x. And the y to the negative 1. Hey, this y to the negative 1 means it's going to move up to the top as y to the first. So this x to the negative 2 went down. This y to the negative 1 went up. Alright, so here's what we got. A 3 on the numerator. A 3, a y, and a y. That's 3y squared. On the denominator, what do we got? A 9, x squared, and x to the 1. 2 plus 1, 9x to the 3rd. I can simplify 3 ninths. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 3 times. This is my final answer. I don't even need to write the one if I don't want to. That's perfect. y squared over 3x to the third. All right, let's do f. Okay, now, on f, Everything in parentheses is raised to the negative 1 power.
the 2 goes to the negative 1. The x squared goes to the negative 1. The y goes to the negative 1. So here's what I'm going to do. 2 to the negative 1. x squared 2 times negative 1. This 2 times this negative 1. We learned that yesterday. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. And then y to the negative 1. Good. All right, now let's go to my second parentheses. 2 goes squared. x to the 0 goes squared. y goes squared. 2 squared. x to the 0 squared. Well, 0 times 2 is 0, so that means that it's just going to be a 1. Let me go slower. x to the 0 times 2 is x to the 0, right? Which is 1. So let's just write that instead. And then y to the second. A lot's going to happen over here. Because these are all negative exponents over here. It's going to become 1 over 2 to the first. 1 over x squared, 1 over y to the first. They all have negative exponents. The negative exponents move the numbers down to the bottom to show that they're going to be fraction numbers. Times 2 squared. I don't even need to write 1 anymore. y squared. Okay. Good. So, if these are all over 1, I'm just going to multiply straight across. 1 times 1 times 1 times 2 squared y squared. 4 y squared. 2 squared is 4. That's what's on the numerator. Once again, 1 times 1 times 1 times 2 squared times y squared, 4 y squared on the denominator, 2 times x squared times y times 1 times 1. Okay, well, on the bottom I got 2 x squared. Can I do any simplifying? Yep, 4 over 2. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice. Here's my final answer. Rewind at any time if you need to see this again for further explanation. Please flip to the back side and let's do number 7. I just want to make sure that you are comfortable and confident for classwork. So here we go. Negative 3, nothing changes. A to the third, nothing changes. But B to the negative second, make it 1 over B squared. Times 3, nothing changes. B, nothing changes. A squared, nothing changes. Now I'm going to multiply straight across. The only thing on the denominator is b squared, by the way. Negative 3a to the third times 3b a squared. Put together the things that are the same. Like this a to the third and this a squared. 
I can put those together. I am also going to multiply this negative 3 right here times this positive 3 right here. So here we go. Ne let's do the purples. Negative 3 times positive 3. Let's do the A's in blue. A to the third times A squared. Add 3 plus 2. On the B, oh, it's all by itself. Wah, wah. On the denominator, I still have a B squared. Now, something I'm going to introduce you to. I can simplify. If I have a B on top and a B on bottom, i got to simplify. So let's do this. Negative 9, A to the 5th, B. Nothing changes on top. But on the bottom, b times b. Here's how I'm going to simplify. b over b can cancel because a number over itself equals 1. So I could go like 1 over 1. Which means negative 9a to the 5th on top, plain old b on the bottom. That is my final answer. All right, let's go to number eight on your classwork. I'm going to write everything normal until I get to my negative exponents, and then I'm going to flip those. So here we go. Okay, time to flip. And then y squared stays on top. All right, here we go. Multiply straight across. Like terms. 3 times 2, 6. Y times Y squared. It's like Y to the first times Y squared. These black right here. Y to the third. x squared all alone by itself and you know what I should have put x squared first I will in my final answer over x to the 1 okay so let's now talk about writing the final answer properly Well, 6x squared, y to the third, over x to the first. Now this x over x, i got to simplify it. So I'm going to do that. 6x, x, x, and y to the third I'll keep because there's no other y's, over x. Well, guess what? x over x is like 1. So get rid of it. Here's my answer. Final answer. In pink. 6x y to the third over nothing, over 1. You're done. That is your final answer. Great job. Let's get started on the rest of the classwork.